Hey guys, Yankee here, and today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on Do You Love Your Mom and Your Two-Hit Multi-Target Attacks Volume 7. Um, if everything goes according to plan, this should come out like the week after my final video on the anime. Uh, and in that, the OVA was like a beach episode. And I mentioned in that that Volume 7 I knew was a beach episode and I didn't know if they were connected. They're not. This is completely separate from that OVA. Um, okay. I don't know how MMOs work, so before I start talking about the story, um, I've played two MMOs in my life, uh, DC Universe Online, I played that on PS3 for a little bit, and then Digimon Masters Online, which I played for, like, a, a little while. Um, so this starts with, uh, Mamako, Masato, and the rest going to a different server where there's a different area. And I don't know if that's how MMOs work, but I'm just gonna go with it. Um, so they are going to a new area called the uh, Materland, M-A-T-E-R-L-A-N-D. Um, they get there, there's like giant vegetables everywhere, um, which is something that they don't really play around with much. They mention it a few times through this volume, but they never really do much with it like we get mention of broccoli trees but it's i don't know it seems like something that was just sort of tacked on at the end like oh we gotta make this seem like a different area well the giant vegetables are everywhere but that's it and it, there's like a few lines about it um so i don't really know what the point of that was but anyway um here in the modern land is where beastkin are um uh, <laughs> like this starts with them uh, Mamako, Masato, and everyone doing, like, little challenges that this little beastkin boy is giving them. I think it was a boy. Uh, a little, like, a, some beastkin is giving them challenges, and they're just sort of wiping them out, like, really quickly, and if you win, you get, like, uh, it's almost like a gacha again. I, I forget what volume that was. I think it was volume two, where at the end of it all, they got, like, a gacha pull, um, and everyone got crap, but in this one, everyone's getting good stuff, um, so, like, Wise gets an item that makes it so uh, her magic can't be sealed. Things like that. I don't remember what anyone else got. But everyone... Uh, no, I do remember what Mamako got. Uh, she got a... Um, like, a trip to the spa, right? Not the spa, but, like, a little resort. Um, so she got, like, a little vacation for everyone. Um, but, yeah, we, we get to this Beast Can uh, Island... Um, we meet Growlette again. Um, she was from Volume 5. She was a part of the, like, what was it called? Matriarchal Arts Tournament, I think? Basically the tournament with all the moms. Um, so we see her again, and that was nice. Uh, we've, we've had that a couple times now, where just sort of like old characters or, um... Or old characters either come up or are referenced. Like, during Volume 5, we heard, um, we got reference to one of the candidates for party members. Um, and then in this, we get Growlette again. So, I like that. I like that the author sort of brings stuff like that back in occasionally. Um, so, we, we, like I'm there, uh, Mamako Masato and the group, they get on an airship and they're taking off to their destination, and on their way there, basically, uh, but stupid stuff happens, and they crash the airship on a deserted island. And it turns out that island isn't actually deserted, it is, like, the lair of the, uh, the, what is it called? The Four Heavenly Kings, the Libre Rebellion. I never remember how to pronounce it. Um, so we get there, and we meet Fratello, who is the third... Are they called legendary? Now I can't. Now I'm like second guessing myself. Um, but he is the third member of uh, Amante and Sorella's group, um, and sort of he and Masato sort of meet and hit it off and become friends. Um, and it's like, uh, what is it? The, like. <sighs> that silly thing anime does where like men bond through like fighting and things like that um I guess it's not too silly I'm sure that happens but like they do it a lot in anime um 
And, like, it's sort of, like, the first major male character Masato has met. So they sort of uh, take a liking to each other, and they train here and there throughout this little volume. Um, and then we got... Well, first of all, Masato is very excited to do, like to be like Bear grills and just survive on the deserted island. Um, and that's quickly ruined by Mamako and Medi and Wise and all them, who, like, they crashed so they couldn't go to their the resort. So they're turning it into a resort. Um, and during the crash, everyone lost their equipment. So nobody has anything. Uh, but Mamako is still able to, uh, like, basically communicate with Mother Earth and Mother... What is it? Mother Earth and Mother Water? Um, so, so she'll be like, uh, the kids want a resort. Can you make a resort? And then a resort appears. Um, and then they made like a little town. And suddenly this deserted island has like a bunch of tourists on it. Um, and that was silly. And we see a, a bit of Masato sort of getting crapped on. Like, that's happened a lot in this series. But it happens... I wouldn't say more here. It just, it keeps happening here. Um... So yeah, they turn the island into a resort. They're off, like, having fun. Um, throughout this, though, we see Mamako getting really tired. Um, and Masato sort of notices. And he sort of keeps quiet about it at first, but brings it up eventually. Um, and then, uh, what is it, Wise, Medi, and Porta and stuff, they sort of notice as well. Uh, so, I, I don't want to say they're growing, but, like, they see that she's tired and they don't push her too far. Um, so they're relying on her a lot, but they at least realize Mamako has limits too. Um, uh, eventually, uh, Shirase uh, finds them uh, on this island that shouldn't really exist. Uh, and we also get a new sort of Shirase form, which we don't get for too long in this volume. Uh, we get uh, Miaura. Meow, meow Rossi? I haven't written as Meow Rashi on my notes. But uh, Shirashi. Shirashi. I, I'm having that thing where you say something so many times it doesn't sound real anymore. Uh, Shirase. Uh, it's just her in her nun outfit, but with cat ears and a cat tail. And that's it. Um, but that's fun because the first volume, and then. First volume, she was somebody else, and then she quickly becomes the nun and just sort of sticks with that. And I wish that the author had done more with that, having her be, like, different characters every once in a while. Um, so, yeah. Shirashi's new form was fun. Uh, Hahako is still here. Uh, at the end of Volume 6, uh, we had Hahako basically deciding she's going to try and make Amante and Sorella her kids. Uh, and that's back here. We see her basically on this island trying to, like... Like, she brings up that those are... The, she wants them to be her children. Um, and we get, like... We get, like, this silly uh, bath scene where uh, Mamako and Hako are giving uh, Masato a bath. Um, and it's fun. I like I like how Hako keeps popping up. I hope she continues to keep popping up. Um, but, yeah. My notes are a mess. I'm really sorry about that. Um... So, we get to the end. We're just going to skip to the end. Um, the... For, <laughs> Masato still didn't know that Fratello was part of, like, the Four Heavenly Kings. And Fratello basically leads him to their lair. Just brings him in because uh, Fratello promised Masato he would teach him, like, a very strong move. Because a lot of in this volume we see Masato really trying to get stronger. Um which is sort of one of the things that he was excited about for, like, this having to survive on the island with, like, no weapons and stuff. It's like, this was a chance for him to get strong. Um, and that eventually ends up with... Uh, Mamako's exhausted. Um, she's been working hard this whole time, and the island itself is sort of, like, draining her power. Um, so it's, like, she didn't have her swords, which probably took a bit out of her when she was using, like, Mother Water and Mother Earth, but, like, the island itself was designed to weaken her, kind of. Um, and Masato basically steps up and says, look, you're tired. Leave it to me. And she does. And, like, this is where the volume, like, was elevated for me. 
we're seven volumes in and Masato is, hasn't really gotten a whole lot to do. Um, and finally we got like, here we go, he gets a big fight to himself and it was good and Mamako didn't step in. She didn't have to come save him. Um, the reason he was able to win is because of Mamako because we learn in this, uh, we learn in this volume that, um, again, the point of this whole game that they're in is to sort of bring mothers and their children closer together. So when Masato says that he's going to protect Mamako, he gets a power boost, and that's great. I like that a lot. Um, <laughs> it's so silly. And, like, after all these volumes, he's sort of... He has grown quite a bit by this volume, where he basically s sets her down. Oh, the talk they have. I, I like this volume a lot. If you, I don't know. The first half of the, the book is sort of par for the course, but by the end, I'm really loving this volume, and it's probably my favorite volume of the series. Um, he basically sets down Mamako and says, look, you're tired, but you're pretending not to be, um, because you don't want me to worry, but I notice, and that just makes me worry more. Um, and it's great. And Mamako just says, okay, I'll leave it to you and I'll relax. And she gets like a new move. I forget what it was called. It's like a mother's day off. Um, so she gets like a new, like ability because of it. Um, and it's great. This was a Masato volume and it was really good. And I never, some people really don't like Masato and I get it. He, and, and especially in the first volume, he's kind of a jerk. But I get it. And by now, I really like him a lot. Um, and I'm really interested to see what happens going forward because there's only four volumes left. This, this series ends at volume 11. And he now knows, sort of, <laughs> he now knows that the source of his power is Mamako and wanting to sort of protect her. So I'm interested, I'm interested to see how he uses that in the future. Um, but that's basically it for, like, the main story. Um, we got... I got two more notes here. Uh, one, Porta's mom. It's been hinted at since, like, volume... Like, maybe even two? Like, I don't remember. It's been hinted on since... It's been hinted at since early on that Porta's mom is some sort of big bad guy. Um, I don't remember what volume it was. It must have been the end of volume three. Uh, I assume it was Amante talking to, like, the Black Mist, and the Black Mist specifically says, don't mess with Porta, right? Leave her be. Um, and so we get to the, uh, the secret lair, and we get to basically, we see, like, their, like, their quarters, right? Where they live. And there's four rooms. One is Amante's, one is Sorella's, one is Fratello's. I also didn't mention this. Fratello was not a man. He is a girl. Of course he is. Of course she is, right? Um, I never thought for a second he was actually male. Um, and then there is a fourth room. Uh, at some point, Mamako and everyone else get, in, get here in the lair, which I didn't talk about, but whatever. Um, that part's not really important. Uh, and Shirase and Porta, who aren't combatants, they go and hide in the fourth room, which didn't have anybody in it. And they go in, and Porta sees, like, a stuffed animal, and she sort of runs up and hugs it, and Shirase asks her, like, y you like that stuffed animal, right? And she's like, yes, I've wanted it since we got in the game. And so, Porta's mom is in charge of the four heavenly kings, and here's sort of, like, my theories. Um, Amante, Sorella, Fratello, those are the three. I don't know if Porta's mom is the fourth Heavenly King and she's just in charge, or if what I think it is is Porta's mom wants Porta to be the fourth one, and so that's why when she gets to the room it's full of stuff that Porta likes. I think I guess it's got to be next volume, right? We've This has been going on basically since volume three, so four volumes of build up for this. Uh, Porta's mom has to show up in the next volume and I don't I don't know. I, I think we're going... Well, they even bring up, Shirase brings up that look, you're breaking the rules but if your intention in breaking the rules is getting closer to your daughter um, 
well, we can we can maybe overlook some of what you're doing because that's what the whole point of this game is. Um, so I think next volume we're getting Porta's mom. I think we're getting maybe not a betrayal, but I think it's going to be one of those things where Porta is sort of like she's almost forced to choose a side, um, like Monaco and everyone else or her mother. And I think that's where the sort of conflict is going to come and I'm excited and I'm glad we're sort of getting I'm glad we're I'm glad we're getting to the end of the Four Heavenly Kings thing I'm glad we're finally figuring out what Porta's mom is because that's been hinted at since volume one um overall this is a this is a great volume this is my favorite volume of this series um I think I think when I rated it on Goodreads I gave it a five out of five um I really enjoyed this I'm really looking forward to seeing where the series goes if the Four Heavenly King stuff wraps up next video, or next video, um, next volume, I don't know what they do for the last three, um, but I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this is one of those novels that I picked up sort of on a whim and didn't think I would like as much as I am, and I almost dropped it, and I'm really glad I stuck with it, because this is actually really fun. Um, so anyway, this video got way too long. Um, Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.